Hey there YouTubers. I wasn't planning on doing a video on this. It seemed like a really easy one. So forgive the uh, crude nature of the video footage on this. 36 volt golf cart charger. Uh, went and did some preliminary checks on it. I'm not getting any kind of output on this and it does have a voltage sensing circuit. So basically it's not going to turn on unless it actually has power at it. It had a board. Uh, this board right here was anchored back in here. And then it's got a relay board down here. I did some quick preliminaries on it and I've got good 110 volt coming in when it's powered up. There is a voltage sensing circuit that I believe is related to this board, which feeds back uh, power to this board, which then energizes that relay. That relay there allows that uh, transformer to turn on. It's got some uh, larger diodes. I believe that's a 50 amp fuse coming back on the negative side. And I, I checked the capacitor itself. The capacitor actually tested good. Um, you got a capacitor tester on your meter. So check the capacitor, it tested good. I went through and um, jumpered this relay, uh, basically forward bias that relay, jumpered it. So the outputs were connected. When I do that, I get roughly 40 volts out here with no um, nothing connected to it so so i'm sure that the transformer is working properly i'm sure that the high power diodes are working properly i uh, believe that the problem that i'm experiencing is on the voltage um, feedback circuit going through i did notice a little bit of corrosion on the wires things like that but uh, this board appears to be bad went through i didn't see anything jumping out at me but there's a pretty good chance that, like one of these diodes or excuse me one of these capacitors are probably bad or one of the transistors is internally shorted, but nothing like catastrophic blew up. I looked for cold solders. I didn't see anything there. I was looking for a voltage back here on the board to see if it was biasing this uh, relay. And I didn't see the power coming back to bias that relay. And when I started looking for the schematic for this thing, I found online a uh, uh, an upgrade kit for this thing that basically one board replaces these two and um, then when you're when you add that to cart right it uh, adds these two um, diodes and then uh, this fuse as well so i ordered the parts it was a lot cheaper than uh, even just buying the schematic to try to fix the board it was actually cheaper to buy all the new pieces came in the mail i'm gonna take a look at it and see how it compares the relay the voltage sensing circuit everything is all tied into this one upgraded board Let's swap the pieces out. We'll hook it back up to a battery and see what's going on. So what showed up in the mail was a new replacement board that this board has basically all the logic and everything built into it. So it's got the relays, it's got the voltage sensing, it's got, uh, it also has the uh, 50 amp fuse to replace the original one. Um, it's also got some standoffs to mount this new board. And I also got, uh, uh, looks like a new fuse and two of these diodes. Let's go diode check real fast. So 0.48 that way. And open that way. And... 47 that way uh, get the two diodes installed real fast and clean those up measures the same way as the other one
um, I got the fuse pulled out. It was not uh, physically broken like you might have just seen in the video until I started twisting on it. So. So there's my, there's my fuse, there's the connector to the fuse, here's your diodes. That part's together. I want to be very careful about this board right here because, I mean, the more I pull on that fuse, the worse it's going to get. And I'm going to put my microphone right here so I can talk to you. Don't anticipate leaving that in there. Where is this board going to mount when I'm done? These holes don't, it doesn't match up with that board. It actually matches up quite well with that board, the standoffs on that board. We know that the, we know where the relays go. Let's see if we can figure out the rest of it. AC coming in, that's the white, and that's the green going to the chassis ground. XF stands for transformer, and that would be this wire here that does go to the transformer. Then we have another wire coming from the transformer, which on here says goes to that one. This one is the black wire to the AC coming in, which is right here. This black wire here goes to the DC plug, which uh, is this wire right here. This is the one leaving to go to the DC plug, right over there. And then the red wire, let's see where it goes. That red wire goes to the heat sink, which should be right there. So it's pretty much plug and play. Let's do them one at a time. So this black wire is just like this black wire. Pull it off. Which is odd because the black wire is going to the red wire. Kind of counterintuitive. I don't like how that doesn't slide together. I'm going to put some tape around that. All right, this wire, the red wire, is going to go to the heat sink just like this one did. There we go. This wire is my AC power coming in. So that's this this black wire, the one that's running up to this front cord. And then this one is my transformer. The transformer goes to that plug. The one coming from the AC line, the, basically the three-prong plug, goes up here. It's not as tight as I'd like. Grab my van pliers. These are, in my opinion, some of the best pliers in the world. They are not a sponsor, although I wish they were, because um, they are kind of pricey. But you can sometimes catch them on sale. They can grab a, uh, well, watch the videos and you'll see what I'm talking about. They can grab a um, stripped out head of a bolt, stuff like that, and pull it out. It's actually kind of impressive. Let's get the white wire. Um, the transformer wire, this is labeled pretty well, so I'm just going to get this out of my way so I can see what you can see and you guys can see. Right, the green wire went here to the GRN, kind of self-explanatory. The white wire goes to WHT, self-explanatory. So the green wire, by the way, is chassis ground. White is neutral from the power supply. And then the XF transformer goes to that center lead. And all those feel really good. Ah, 
not a great job because it didn't shrink up on this very well, but I had to get over the top of that. You could still pull it apart. I just wanted to insulate it was what I was after. Okay, she came with brand new standoffs. Let's go ahead and plug those in. says charging time selection one plus two plus four plus eight is 15 hours i guess let me see that'd be uh six eight fourteen yeah that's 15 hours anyway is uh, all of them in the up position so all dip switches right now are in the up position um i'm gonna take some air and get rid of any kind of debris that could have fallen when i was brushing the contacts Get the board snapped into the holes. And I'm going to put all the screws back in place to mount all this before we plug it in, just because there's a lot of voltage here. I'm going to do that. I'm going to set up a 36 volt battery bank, and then we'll try to see if this thing charges now. Okay, what I've got going on, I've I hooked up some. Uh, three old batteries in series. One lead to here and one lead to here. You can see that what I've got is running at about, claims is 37 volts, but these are really old batteries, so it's not a true good voltage. But see the meter's in positive, it's not uh, negative. So basically if I had the meter hooked up the other direction, You can see the meter would show negative voltage. So let's hook it up the right way. Okay, so I'm showing positive voltage. This is my positive lead, right? I traced the wires down inside here and figured out that this right here was the positive side, the one that's got that flat edge to it. So we've determined that this is my negative of my 36 volts. This is my positive of my 36 volts. All right. When I touch this, you'll actually hear the relays click in here. I don't know if y'all heard it click or not, but that right there would turn on the uh, charging circuit. So what we can do is to prove it, take that uh, positive lead off for a second. Let's plug in the charger. Okay, so the charger's plugged in. Let's put that on the positive lead. And this right here on the negative lead. You can see I'm not outputting any kind of voltage out of this charger right now. I take my 36 volts and I plug it up. I heard it kick on, the meter moved, and now I'm pushing out 45 volts, which the, the regulator is gonna put out slightly more than the 36 volts that it needs until it catches up to its 36 volt capacity and then it's supposed to throttle it back down. I've got some pretty small wires here but I'm gonna keep tabs on it and see if it actually shuts off. It has a power timer on there that we set for 15 hours remember. It's supposed to also auto sense that voltage and determine that it's putting out enough voltage. I'm gonna let it sit for a little bit while we're not on camera because it's gonna take a while and I'm gonna verify that, that these aren't getting hot and see if this shuts off when the batteries finally reach their full potential. The batteries may not shut it off just because my, my the batteries I've got plugged into this are honestly shot if you load tested them. So they don't test very well. Um, so I'm not really sure if it's actually gonna let it shut off or not. But um, I'll keep tabs on it and see what's going on. I'll be back with you guys. Just a quick update. I checked the uh, battery voltage that it's trying to push to each battery. And this one is taking 14 volts, roughly 13.8. This one's taking 14.3. This one down here is taking 17 and a half volts. And this was one of the batteries that I said was not gonna make it. I do notice that the gauge is moving its way down. We're still putting out 45 volts. So it knows to start pushing the current back 
Um, nothing's really getting hot. It's not a great way to do this, but I'm just trying to uh, see what it, how the charger is actually behaving. We were putting out between five and seven amps. Now we're putting out somewhere between one and two amps, something like that. It is still measuring 45 volts here. Like I said, it's going to push more than what the battery is capable of until it's fully charged. Uh, all in all, I think it's going to work. I'll be back with you guys. All right, so the uh, charger shut off. It dropped to zero amps. Um, let's see what my output actually is reading. 39 volts, um, 38 volts. Anyway, real, real cheap way to revive a 36 volt easy go charger. Didn't take a whole lot of effort. I'll put the cover back on. And uh, like I said, sorry for the crudeness of the video. I just, I didn't anticipate doing one for this. Uh, you guys got something out of the video. Really appreciate a thumbs up. Subscribe helps the channel tremendously. Catch you guys on the next one.